My name is Peter Dunker. I'm Professor Emeritus at the School for Resource and Environmental Studies at Dalhousie University. We can't really do much better than to say old growth is populated with relatively old trees and showing relatively little human disturbance. So we have lots of big red spruce, we have some big hemlocks, and we have some big uh, yellow birches in this stand. So my, my eyes immediately turn to the big trees. Do we have the big trees of the right species? And it was clear as soon as we were in the stand from the road that we did. It's special from a biodiversity point of view. So uh, a stand with complex structures like this stand has would probably have a richer array of uh, species associated with it. And we're particularly interested in species at risk. But I'm just uh, enamored personally with uh, big trees associated with a lot of small trees and, and the diversity of trees we have. I come in and I, I look around and I say, this is simply awesome. The new policy will have a much more nuanced approach to the definition, the technical definition of old growth forest. One is uh, a movement away from definition of old growth based on species of tree toward the use of the forest ecosystem classification for Nova Scotia. So at the moment, we have uh, in the 2012 policy, we have nine species of, of trees identified as qualifying to be in the pool of old growth that we have in the province. But now we're going to move toward a system that uses uh, forest types as defined in the Nova Scotia forest ecosystem classification. Um, <clears throat> the age range uh, for the current policy is simply 125 years for all species. That will be converted to much more of a range in the new policy, which will have a low end of 110 and a high end of 140, depending on which old forest type we're contemplating. The second thing we shouldn't um, uh, ignore is the role of agriculture. And so as settlers, um, got their properties, many of them expected that they would be farmers. This was the way you, you um, uh, made a living and looked after your family. So we cleared a huge amount of forest in Nova Scotia for agricultural purposes. The third element I wanted to mention is climate change. And uh, there are various aspects uh, to climate change. One is the um, rising temperature uh, pattern that we have. Red spruce will not do well in a warm climate, the kind of climate we may have here in the next 50 to 100 years. That's one aspect. The second is wind. There is an expectation for the atmosphere to become windier, especially uh, here. These old growth forests are generally tall, and the taller a tree is, the greater the chance that if the wind catches the crown, it could knock the tree over. Now, we expect deadwood to be on the forest floor, but we don't expect them all to be blown over. For viewers of this video, I would urge them to do three things. The first thing is to learn more about the old forests of Nova Scotia. The second thing is to find out where special old growth forests might be and go and visit them. Thirdly, support initiatives that are dedicated toward the conservation of old growth forests, particularly on private land.